a surrender. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back, for I'm the one, the only, I am a hobo, Tom. And I have to make this quick. Fortunately for being quick, the one of thank you today, I was kind of busy. I was running around. I had work. I had to take a trip up the hill to Jack's to deliver birthday gifts to Twisted Pixie, who I will be giving a birthday shout-out to right on her birthday, which is Halloween. So probably the 30th, Twisted Pixie, you shall see your birthday shout-out. So, but with that being said, I think I only missed really the opening bit of Raw. Or I think I was showering or doing something. So I, I missed a little bit of the draft. Eh, it's the draft. But let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. So again, does a little draft recap. I'll tell you what. <sighs> that really didn't move much around. Like, I, I figured they would revamp things. They've kind of kept things status quo-ish, with the exception of the tag team titles. That's going to be something interesting. Oh, yes. And happy Columbus Day to everyone out there. Even though the probably the Vikings... I guess the Vikings discovered what we consider America first. You know, the Asians probably came across the land bridge to Alaska. Way before that. I mean, the Asians, the Vikings, Marigo Vespucci. I think Christopher Columbus was like the fourth person to find America. Oh, well. Cheers to you, sir. Ugh. I won't put any images. Because for some reason, Christopher Columbus is met with disdain. I don't know why. He didn't even find America. He found, like, Mexico. Or... Caribbean, but that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about some pro wrestling as I was before I got distracted by wishing everyone a happy Columbus Day. For most people, kind of had to go back to work. Some people, El Postino, you, I dislike my postman enough as is, much more to the fact that he is off and I had to work today, even though we're both government workers. Insane. But, um, so, Monday Night Raw starts off. A little draft recap, then Randy Orton comes out, cuts a promo. Of course, Drew McIntyre then comes out. They just start brawl. Typical start to any show dealing with those two, so that's okay. And the first match was Kevin Owens versus Aleister Black. And from what I figured out, it was a no-DQ match. Um, very brawler-ish. little, um... Catch as catch can fighting really. They each go for their finisher early, but no, didn't happen. They were countered. <laughs> then ouch! Uh, they go to the outside. Kevin Owens gets like punted in the ribs. He's either a great seller, or I'll tell you what, Alistair Black like looked like he nailed him in the ribs. Full leg extension. That's the way to sell a kick. There was no leg slapping either, which is good. With me a thud. You want to hear? Not. It's a different. You want to hear like this here. Yeah, versus. Yeah, you hear. Ugh, that that sounds like it made contact, baby. No leg flapping here. But that's okay. That's one of my pet peeves. Like, especially when you, when you really see the wrestlers slap the thigh. It's like, eh. Some wrestlers hide it really well. Other wrestlers, not so much. That's okay. Um, and then, uh, see, so Kevin Owens back outside. They cannonball into like the ringside corner, the part of the ring that's the the always the the OMG corner that always shatters. Except for they have TV screens there, so they probably don't want to waste all that money they spent on TV screens. So I understand that. Uh, Kevin Owens. Go back in the ring. There's a chair. Kevin Owens gets drop toe hold. I love it when they use a drop toe hold. It's such a classic wrestling move. It's been around forever. You can use it with a chair. Works perfectly. Use it with a lot of things. Drop toe hold onto the chairs. Classic stuff. Um, Alistair Black goes outside. Gets more chairs. <laughs> Alistair Black then. And he didn't realize once you throw the chairs in, that means the other guy can use them too. So Kevin Owens takes the chair. 
lap right across the back of Alistair Black. Um, and there's a couple table spots. I'll tell you what, for the most part, that, that announce table is pretty sturdy. A lot of people got dropped on that today. But eventually, Alistair Black gets power bombed onto the table. Kevin Owens picks up the win. One, two, three. Kevin Owens wins. Solid match. Probably a good way to end this feud. Good surf and turf match. Then we get into some... Um, uh, let's see here. It was the draft. I kind of followed it throughout the show. I made various notes. Uh, for Raw... Again, spoiler alert. You have Elias Retribution, Keith Lee, Alexa Bliss, Braun Strowman, Lacey Evans, Sheamus, Nikki Cross, R-Truth, Jeff Hardy, Titus O'Neil, Peyton Royce, Tozawa, Matt Riddle, uh, Dabe, Dabe Kato, and I think Charlotte Flair and The Fiend are also on Raw. And I know I missed part of it, so, so that's okay. Over on SmackDown, we have Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro, Sami Zayn, Lars Sullivan. It's good to see Lars Sullivan Black back. I'm sorry, Aleister Black's there. Carmella, who cares about her? Uh, Baron Corbin. Uh, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode, Daniel Bryan. Oh, Kayla's on SmackDown too? Man... And uh, Apollo Crews. And there were a few, two others I missed early. I don't think it was of any consequence. That's okay. I mean, for the most part, everyone kind of stayed as is. And they've been going back and forth, so... Meh. Uh, then we get to Miz TV. We have Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Those two. I wonder if they had the same plastic surgeon. Yeah, that's right. I said it, folks. Because I'll tell you what, they look to be exactly this. They, they look to be like near almost clones of each other now, which is kind of freaky. But yet, mildly arousing. I digress. Natalia and Lana have to come out then. Uh, they start a brawl. Lars Sullivan then comes out and just wrecks Morrison. That'll be good to see. As long as Lars, I don't know what Lars Sullivan did, but yeah, we'll find out though. Um, then we have Seth Rollins. Um, he says goodbye to Monday Night Raw. Uh, AJ Styles, Jeff Hardy comes out, takes the ring. Then AJ Styles is like, get out of here. I like it. Oh, AJ Styles is, is still best. Um, starts off. I'll tell you what, Jeff Hardy, I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he's still walking. I don't know how he has a spinal column anymore. Um, he's going to need some hip surgery in about 20 years. Because Jeff Hardy, God bless you, Jeff Hardy, you kind of wreck yourself trying to wreck others. It's insane. Um, from there, they kind of, they did the kind of the very much becoming systematic triple threat match. Where one person goes out of the ring. Did I get that? Probably. One person goes out of the ring. Then two people kind of showcase. Then they kind of switch it around so that one person comes in, kicks someone out. That person takes a little break. They wrestle, wrestle. They're in the middle of the ring for a little bit. The uh, next person comes in. And the spot fits. I'll tell you what. I do like the fact that AJ Styles has probably the best move set in all of wrestling. I mean... The stuff he does, I mean, he does that that uh, suplex neck breaker. I know he's probably one of the safest workers. Uh, I know the one guy was paralyzed in the, with a size clash, but even that wrestler said, you know what, that was my fault. AJ Styles, for having such a New Japan violent drop people on their head and break necks, style of New Japan wrestling. I don't know how he does it. But because he is again does the most vicious looking maneuvers in probably the safest fashion. Again, that moveset of AJ Styles is amazing. And it was pretty neat to see because um Jeff has a pretty good moveset of his own. 
He does do a lot of combo moves, um, known for the inverted atomic drop, uh, the uh, double leg takedown to the double leg drop. And this time he also did another one. He did like um, an atomic drop, classic atomic drop. Again, another three move set, really showcasing his skills. And then he had something that I thought was going to tear like the groin muscle off of poor Seth Rollins because what he did he it was a an almost a side Russian leg sweep takedown but he spun out of it caught the legs of Seth and then like double leg dropped Seth Rollins legs and got and caught him in the prong clutch and I saw Seth Rollins' legs bend the way a man's legs should not bend. And I'm like, oh my God, I felt something tear in my groin when I saw that. That made me say, oh, yes. But that, I, it looked amazing. And I'm sure Jeff said something to it and like, don't worry, it'll be okay. I mean, it just, like, your legs might bounce funny, but but you'll be fine. Seth probably said, okay, let's try. Yeah, it, it, it feels funky, but it, it's nothing irreversible. But I'll tell you what, the way his legs jerk, though. Ouch. Pulled my groin. Um, AJ Styles hit, uh, kicked out of a Falcon's arrow. Again, became spot fest. AJ Styles hit that DDK, which is awesome. Uh, how, does, how do I? It's, it goes from a suplex into a scorpion death drop. It's... Again, AJ, AJ style. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Um, does a DDK that that was amazing. Um, and then the smart AJ because then all of a sudden, of course, one of the things is that Jeff Hardy hit the Swanton onto Seth. Seth kind of pushes, or AJ pushes Jeff Hardy off of him. Uh, Seth does kick out, kind of rolls out of the ring. And then Jeff Hardy, he stares on AJ Styles. And then, out of the middle of nowhere, Oh, walk with Elias. Oh, walk with Elias. Elias comes out and nails Jeff Hardy with his guitar. Um, smart, a smart, opportunistic AJ takes the pin. AJ Styles takes the win. AJ Styles needed a win somewhere. Um, it's not for any titles. AJ Styles is still the best wrestler ever, or one of the best. Again, this was a good match. It really showcased everyone. You had the um, surprise run-in by Elias, Surf, and Turf match. So yeah, Raw starts off amazing, which always, always worries me. So then we get two Mandy Rose versus Natalia and Lana. Um, good, du good double team by Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. They're really gelling together. Not silicon gel, but yeah, they're being co cohesive. Cohesive, yeah. That's uh, that they're being co co cohesive, yeah. Uh, again, good double teams by Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. They're really gelling together. That's pretty good. Um, Lan Lana's definitely improving a little bit. There's a draping leg drop that looked good. Good looking arm bar. And then she just started to slap Mandy Rose. Ouch. Um, eventually Lana cheats the knees. That one knee by man, that running knee by Mandy Rose looks absolutely vicious. And then the assisted senton where Mandy Rose goes to the top, holds the hands of... Mandy Rose and the kind of flips her to Senton style into Lana. Yeah, Lana's getting buried. Or is she? So we'll see. Um, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke pick up the win. Natalia's like, really? We lost again? I'm done with this nonsense. So Natalia teasing a breakup with uh, Lana. Again, that was a fun enough match, though. Can't complain. Solid cheeseburger match.
Then we had Andrade versus Angel Garza, and this was fun. This felt like this felt like it should have been like a Mexican uh, Mexican death match. Like it should it should have been like a Cabalas v Cabalas match, a hair versus hair match. So that would be utterly oh. There is a good booking idea for Hell in a Cell. Have a hair versus hair match, or or here's here's another one. Have the wrestler must wear a mask. The reverse of the mask versus mask match. Now it's the face versus face match, where the wrestler who loses has to don the mask. That's different, at least. Um, again, this was a great match. Andrade was working over the injured leg of Angel Garza. I guess it wasn't that bad. I think he said it was a. I forget if it was a strain, tear, or just pull of the lug muscle, but it wasn't like, I mean, he didn't tear the quad off the, off like all four quads off the bone, like um, Triple H did, nor like Vince McMahon did. I mean, if you really stretch something, or just really, like, I, like, trust me, I've pulled a hamstring before, hurts, pure pain. And it, it does make you go limp in that leg for a few days. It's not something you want to pull. If you pull it, if you pull a quad, you're gonna know about it. And it's really gonna hurt initially. And you're just like praying and then uh, a week or two later, like that weird seven to day, ten day mark. Between like that seven to ten days, it's kind of like the throbbing pain. Seven to at like seven to ten days, depending on yourself and what you did to it, it, it just all of a sudden like goes away. It's just one of those things. Time heals all wounds, for which makes sense. Again, it's not like if you tore it off the bone, which is not right and probably super painful. But yeah, if you ever pull a hamstring. It's not debilitating, but it feels like it should be. Again, I've pulled quads before. It feels debilitating. But then, if you kind of just walk through it a little bit, it, it, it's a dull, throbbing pain then for a week. And then, like, by, I think, when I did mine, I think it was a hamstring. So I think I pulled it. I pulled it on a Monday in practice kind of because we only had practices monday wednesday thursday walk through friday off tuesday kind of half-assed it wednesday thursday yeah, i felt a little bit better friday it felt good enough to kind of jog on and then by saturday it's like oh pain's gone so Again, it, it varies with the severity, so it, it's very good to see Angel Garza. It wasn't nowhere near as bad as people speculated. So that's always good to see. Um, but Andrade is still working over that leg. Um, that crescent kick by Angel Garza looked absolutely spectacular. They had uh, Zelina Vega on commentary. She's like, yeah, I can do that to both of them. I can slap both of them around. I got tired of their, their nonsense. I wanted to just beat them both up. Please. They're freaking four foot five inches tall in the heels. Yeah. Um, eventually, Andrade gets eats the wing clipper. Angel Garza wins. This could set up an interesting feud. This was a fun match, too. Nothing spectacular happening. Good, solid wrestling match. Good story being told. Cheeseburger match. Then we have the uh, the Fiend and Alexa Bliss come out because Angel Garza left the ring. He's like, yep, Victorio. Uh, Andrade's in the ring with poor Selena Vega. Uh, the Fiends, the lights go out. You're like, oh, is this retribution? And then you're that. Uh, the Fiend come out and um, Alexa Bliss comes out or, or, or Sister Bliss, whatever moniker she goes under now and they deliver tandem 
Sister Abigail's, again, The Fiend does it to Andrade. Alexa Bliss does it to Zelina Vega. Pretty good stuff. Then we have the New Day taking on the New Day taking on is it New Day Rock? New Day Rock. Taking on Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler. This was actually a classic match. This is what I enjoy the most. They start off in a very classic, traditional collegiate style wrestling match between Xavier Woods, who does have some collegiate background, and Dolph Ziggler, who's renowned for his collegiate background. And it's really good to see. It's like, wow, this is a real contest. Not so much the traditional collar and elbow type, but, but, the, but, but the catch wrestling style going for takedowns, um, half Nelsons, uh, riding, riding time. I think Dolph went for an alligator roll at one time. Again, good collegiate wrestling. Fun stuff. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I mean, that's good. That again brings me back to to my to my youth. So that's always good to see. Now Kofi then it was a very technical match for a while. Then Kofi got isolated. Uh, Rude and Ziggler was the assisted famouser on to Kofi. Bobby Roode has his wrestling is so crisp. It's very methodical, very calculated, very crisp. Though done a lot with purpose. The very technical heel, the kind of heel who who will actually begin to really dissect you as an opponent. And even though he might have to break the rules, he's really targeting you. Good stuff. Then uh, Woods eventually gets the hot tag. Does the uh, spinning head scissors take down Dolph Counters Woods with a zigzag? The spine buster on Xavier Woods, that was good though. However, the New Day do hit the up, up, down, down onto, I think, Dolph Ziggler. And they win. I'll tell you what, it was fun, exciting. You were cheering. Even Robert Roode, you could see him work the angle of the match, the technical aspects of the match, even though being very heelish, it actually works for him. And again, when he was in NXT, being that very technical, methodical heel, saying, I know when to back off, I, I know when to heal it up, I really know when to go after someone, that's really good to see. A surf and turf match. Then we have uh, Cedric Alexander. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, Cedric Alexander challenges Ricochet. The stipulation to this match, if Ricochet loses, he becomes a member of the Hurt Squad. He would probably become their lackey. So we'll see what happens. Uh, again, classic wrestling match. Um, Cedric healing it up. Just, just, he has a taped forearm. Just rubbing it, grinding it against the back of the head and neck area of, of Ricochet. It's kind of what I could use now. Again, the kind of back rake with the fingertips. Kind of looks good. <laughs> it looks like something a masseur would do. Um, again, very classic wrestling match. Very heelish by Cedric Alexander. Uh, again, he starts to take orders from NJF. And then just slaps. Oh, Ricochet silly. That was so good. The night uh, Ricochet tried to roll up. He did the half and half suplex for the two. Sweet. Um, eventually... Ricochet lands on top of the ref. So we have a ref bump. MVP slides the chair in. MVP did not slide in the chair hard enough, nor give it enough acceleration or velocity. It lands in the hands of Ricochet. Uh, as the ref kind of gets to Ricochet wins by Eddie Guerrero. He takes the chair, whap, bangs on the ground, tosses the chair to Cedric, whose first thing was actually to catch it. And then Ricochet takes his back bump. The ref sees, the ref knew he heard something, and he saw Cedric Alexander with the chair, and knowing the heelish nature of the Hurt Business, so this is when the story gets involved, I might up, yeah, I'm going to upgrade this. And we haven't seen this in a while. But because of that heelish nature, and being caught red-handed with a chair, and hearing the noise, the ref says, no, 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 no. You're disqualified. Ricochet And then in the main event, 
our somewhat main event. We had the Women's Battle Royals. He was going to face Asuka. Um, the only two people that get the proper entrance are Nia Jax and Shannon Baszler. Uh, all the other women, th those two get announced coming into ring. All the other women, unfortunately, get the jobber entrance. There are a few missing, like Naomi wasn't there, Carmella wasn't there. Those were the two that stood out. No one from NXT was there. Vega was not there. Yeah, there were, um, Billy Kay was there. Bailey wasn't in it. Sasha wasn't in it, but they're in their own thing. So, yeah, it's it like the the women's loser locker room. And Nia Jax cuts a promo. All the women are looking at her. And then, of course, because of that, it's so funny. Yeah, they start to go after her. Uh, Lana's the first one to go after Nia Jax. Bad move, Lana. I guess she, I don't think she went over the rope. I think she went through the ropes. So Lana wasn't disqualified, but then she sits there. She got again. She got tossed out. Poor Lana is just getting beat up and eating tables. Lana should be nowhere near any kind of folding table for like the next month, because I know. Oh yeah, Helena Cell. She's going through a table. Um. So as far as the order of eliminations go, we had Tamina was the first one. Eliminated, then Billy Kay, Mandy Rose, Dana Brooke. Nia Jax got eliminated fairly quickly. Nikki Cross then, Peyton Royce, Shayna, Bianca Belair, Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan. And that left really three, technically three people in the ring, but Lana was still like outside. It was Natalia and Lacey Evans. Then eventually Lana wins by cheap methods. So as far as this match goes, Lana, she just got pummeled. Uh, she went th through the ropes. I think it was through or through or like rolled underneath the bottom. But Lana technically never got eliminated though. Uh, but but she ate a table spot. And after I said that, I'm like, "Yep, Miro, I hope you enjoy doing this to your wife." Oh, that's so vicious. Um, again, goes through another table every week. Lana's been going through tables. Again, Lana should stay away from any kind of folding table for a very, very long time. Uh, let's see here. On the rights, uh, then just a bunch of brawls. T Tamina, her outfit's different. It's more feminine. Here, that her bust got bigger. Less like a Klingon, and that was pretty good. Oh, yeah, Lana also got double headbutted, too. Double Samoan headbutted. That cannot be good. Uh, and then they just kind of, like, the women kind of brawl every so often. Uh, again, the shift, uh, most of the women, they tried to double team uh, Nia Jax to eliminate her. Even Shannon Baszler helped eliminate Nia Jax. Again, in the Battle Royal, every woman for themselves. Uh, eventually came down to the, the, the final five, actually the four in the ring, was the Riot Squad. And Natalia and Lacey Evans. So again, you had, I think, Liv go after Lon, Liv go after Lacey, and Ruby went after Natalia. However, both members of Riot Squad, for the most part, get eliminated at the same time, uh, leaving just what well, we thought was Natalia and Lacey. And then in the middle of the smash, they just so like Drew and Randy Orton like hijack this whole match, which is not necessarily a good thing. Because it was actually fairly entertaining, again, for being a battle royal. But, um, yeah, they just, like, hijacked it because they were brawling the backstage. And then we went back to the match. Uh, some good stuff. Uh, Natalia. Lacey Evans turns into a slap fest. And they both go on the apron. Um, Lacey Evans, like, gets sent, like, back. Like, she tried to do a hurricanrana, which is really dumb because they're going to wind up on the outside anyway. But, again, they both kind of tease the, the double feet. I'm like, ah, that's Naomi's spot. But, yeah, so Natalia caught her and just whapped her right into the post. And that was the end of that. Um, Lana then just got in the ring, shoved Natalia out. Lana wins the Battle Royal. For all of Lana's efforts, she gets to lose to Asuka at Hell in a Cell. Probably in the pre-show.
I'm not looking forward to that. Um, for the most part, eh. It was a ham sandwich of a match. Let me see Randy Orton. And then to close the show out, Randy Orton and um, Drew McIntyre come out to the ringside. They just continue brawling. And then they get separated eventually. End of show. I'll tell you what. For the most part, it was a fairly entertaining Raw. It didn't feel like it, it was too long. Mainly because the quality of the matches were really good. And they were entertaining. Uh, very little talking between points. This was a cheeseburger show. With that being said, I do have to apologize. Um, I was... Uh, Iho del Hobo El Vagabundo Trace was supposed to be here Saturday night. Um, Triple A said, nope, no Triple Mania this year. I'm sad. I was so looking forward to it. I had it written on my calendar. I had actually the card all ready to go. I'm sorry, I can't control coronavirus. Uh, but this week's schedule, so this will go up probably Tuesday morning, uh, Tuesday night, Impact Wrestling, live streaming, Wednesday night, AEW, off Thursday, SmackDown on Friday, and then I rest up before another big weekend, because there's going to be two met, two big things, actually I think three big shows, four if you count on you. And that's it. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see everyone tomorrow.